Hey guys, welcome to the second lesson of Blockstack plus React. For this lesson, we're going to be exploring the Blockstack browser, creating a new identity via Blockstack, and going to deep dive into a Blockstack application and show you the difference between a Blockstack powered application and a traditional powered application. The first thing we need to handle is the installation. And when I click on that, it's going to link up to the Blockstack installation URL. And depending on the OS you're using, you can download the Blockstack browser in many different ways, or you could use the traditional web application. Since I'm a Mac OS user, I already have the Blockstack application already installed into my computer. And once you've installed your Blockstack browser, we can move on and create an identity. For me, I have the Blockstack logo in the upper left, hand, upper right hand side, and I'm going to click on that and click home. And right off the bat, it gives me the option to create my Blockstack ID. So I'm going to, going to click create new ID. I'm going to search for a ID here and I'm going to say tech rally two. And the username is available. So I'm going to click continue. I'm going to create a password. Creating my Blockstack ID now. And the last thing that should be part of it is including your email. So I'm going to include my email as well. So now that I've created my techrally2.id.blockstack ID, I can now use the Blockstack browser. Once the Blockstack browser opens up, it's going to give you a list of different apps inside of its uh, web page. And this is kind of similar to a Apple Store's App Store or Google Play's Play Store. So there are a list of user-ready apps chat apps, wallet apps, token portfolio apps, and apps that are currently in progress. There are definitely more other apps that do exist that are powered by Blockstack, but at the moment, these are the ones that are kind of getting the highlight within the Blockstack browser. Um, and we can explore a little bit deeper into the user's uh, profile section. So in here, you have the ability to add your full name and add a short bio. Uh, you could also add a picture here and you could link to other social media accounts. So now that we've looked at the user's profile in the Blockstack browser, let's go back to home and explore a decentralized application. The one we're going to be looking at is the to-do list. Right off the bat, when we open up the to-do list, it's going to give you the option to sign in with your Blockstack ID. So once I click that and click on my name here, I'm now logged in as the techrally2.id.blockstack. And I could create many different um, posts here. So if I do post one, post two, and post three. Outside looking in, this doesn't look very different from a traditional to-do app. You have a front-end application and you have a back-end application that stores a database. But a Blockstack, powered application is a little bit different in terms of how data is stored. Like I said before, you own your own data. In other words, there is no backend centralized server that's storing all this information. If anything, it's tied to your Blockstack ID and current application. From a front end perspective, using a traditional API is pretty straightforward. When a user creates a post, they make a post request to the backend server and the backend server stores that information into a database. If a user creates a second post, it repeats that same process and eventually it stores the second post into that database. Blockstack is a little bit different in a sense that if the user creates the first post, it will store that information into their own personal database. If he continues that process and creates a second post, instead of just sending in that single second post, you have to keep a record of all your previous posts as well. In other words, it will overrides the original database, thus requiring the front end to be a little bit more conscious of how the data is being handled. Especially since there isn't any database query language and we're primarily using JavaScript to handle these relationships, it does bring some complications in when the application starts to scale. But it also gives us a lot more power on the front end to dictate how data is stored. I would highly recommend exploring the to-do list tutorial and demo because it's going to give you a very simple idea of how the Blockstack.js library works with a front end framework. For our next lesson, we're going to be creating our 
Blockstack application from scratch using the Create React app and installing some dependencies to power up our Blockstack application. See you.